Hey folks, Jonathan here. Goal for the day. Get this A-frame on, get this thing sitting on the ground. I want to try to get a ride height and then uh, we're going to pull the back body back off and work on the frame, try to get everything finished up. We're actually going to move the engine back today, four inches, and uh, I'll take you along. Squirrelly, what are you doing? What are you doing? Squirrelly, what are you doing? What are you doing? Okay, last of the A-frame bushings made. Uh, for anybody that didn't see, this is an original A-frame bushing and rubber, steel sleeve inside, and 3 8 bolt. This is the ones I made. These are actually uh, two-piece bushing made out of Delrin. Uh, increased the bolt size up to uh, 7 16 and a steel sleeve to go through it. So we've got these ready to press into the A-frame and uh, now I just got to do a little more work to the A-frame and it'll be finished up and then we'll uh, see if we can get the front end bolted on and get this car dropped down. Okay, we're boxing in our second uh, A-frame here. We'll get her done and uh, weld it all in, ground, and then I can uh, start putting bushings in and get everything finished up. I do have to do a little machining where the shock mounts, but or the coilover, so. Alright, we're going to get it. Any guesses what I'm fixing to do soon? Here's another hint. Okay, folks, we have got it off the jacks, off the jack stands. Sitting really low. Uh, three inches, maybe. But, we, I mean, we've still got suspension travel, believe it or not. Oop, I'm zooming in on us. So we've still got quite a bit of travel. Uh, but what we're going to do, this is my plan, or what I've decided to do. Of course, I'm moving the engine back four inches. I'm going to take and remount these A-frames, the upper A-frames, from down here to above. And we're going to make new brackets above. And this, of course, is getting moved, so it don't matter anyway. And then uh, I'm going to make one-inch blocks to go for our springs so we can bring it up just a little bit. And it's going to go actually above or below the springs, so it'll actually give us a little bit more height, uh, bring it up off the ground a little bit. Now the way this is set up, if this car bottoms out, if the front end comes up and it comes back down it bottoms out, it's not going to hit the oil pan, it's not going to bottom the suspension out. It's going to actually hit the frame. The frame is actually going to hit the ground first. So what I plan to do is take wear pad material like I use on the rollback slides and uh, you know any, anything you want to to uh, slide but have something that's uh, not going to grab quick or anything. Uh, we're going to bolt them to the bottom side and we'll recess the bolts up in uh, or use countersink bolts. That way when this thing, if it does come down on the concrete, there'll be what hits and it'll actually let you keep sliding, keep from digging in and hopefully not have any frame issues. When I'm done, you know, we're going to tear this back apart, put the frame over, I got a lot of welding to do. The frame should be strong enough to be able to handle what we're what we're planning here, the way that we're going to do it, because it's not going to come down, and you know, shouldn't hit it hard anyway. So, unless something major happens or or something like that, and that's one of the reasons I wanted to strengthen this front end up. So, uh, but anyway, the angle on the upper A frames is terrible, and the reason is, uh, you know, I was kind of figuring it. The reason is because this spindle from here to here is a lot taller than the original spindle. So I knew that we was going to be changing the angle on the top. So I wanted to get the bottom right first, get our height right before I changed anything on that top one. And then we'll make a plate for the top one to bolt into our uh, Corvette uh, upper ball joint. And uh, it's coming along though. Uh, it's actually about like I figured it was going to be. So uh, it's working out really well. and. I think uh, I think it's going to be okay. Uh, 
the back end I can lower it down more if I want to I don't know if I'm going to I don't know if you can see this but uh, it's gonna look pretty low anyway when we get the rocker panel on here and uh, it should sit about like what I had planned what I expected uh, like I said the engine's got to be moved back I'm gonna make my transmission mount we're gonna get that done uh, we're gonna get some engine mounts made to where we can bolt the engine up where it needs to be and uh, like I said with this being an underslung that's why the frame's so low it looks so low is because you know the, the frames lower than the engine the frames lower than the axles uh, that's just the nature of the beast on this thing keeps your car low keeps your center of gravity low and uh, hopefully it'll work out for us uh, like I said one of the good things is, is if it does come down it will be hitting the frame before it does anything I don't want my suspension bottoming out before the frame hits the ground and for obvious reasons if it bottoms out it's liable to break something and so we're done with the lower A frames besides cleaning them up a little bit and painting them uh, we will be making new bushings for the uppers and increasing the bolt size just like we did the lowers and I've got to figure out what thread this is uh, it's not a 9 16 it's a, could be a, it's a 14 millimeter metric but I'm not sure what which pitch and I gotta find some bolts for these so I can redo our uh, rack so we can get these hooked up for the steering it's not you know no big issue here you know steering is going to be really simple uh, we're going to keep this rack as long as this rack's good shape and you know we're not having any issues with it we're gonna we'll just keep running it uh, everything else is coming along good uh, the front of the engines down now because of the way we got the car raked so we're gonna raise it up you know we're gonna change that some uh, everything seems to be you know working out about like I figured it would uh, it's not going to be an issue on getting our front end alignment right and uh, I think it's going to hold up well now one thing I am going to do because I, I'm just worried about strength wise the way these lower A-frames mount on this bracket has one bolt that goes all the way through the frame and I don't like that one bolt situation so chances are and hopefully you can see that anyway the way this is set up you shim behind this to actually do the alignment on the car and once we get the alignment where we want it, I'm going to weld them in. And we won't be able to change it without cutting it loose. But uh, it's the way that I prefer to have it because I do not want a 3 8 bolt, you know, shearing off. That's, I just don't like the, I just don't like it. If I don't like it, that's just the way I'm going to do it. So anyway, it's coming along good. Uh, we're going to keep on this thing, probably be back on it tomorrow, wide open and uh, hopefully get our rear shocks mounted and like I said once I get them once I get the ride height get the front end right the ride height get the rear ride height and the shocks mounted get the engine moved back and mounted we're gonna take this thing back apart I'm gonna flip the frame over I'm gonna do all the welding the finished stuff on the frame we're gonna build the rear end get it together and we're gonna start putting this thing together permanent and uh, shouldn't be long now okay folks uh, I wanted to show you another thing while I was at it uh, the 55 Chevrolet, we want to change the rear end in it because it's got a 390 or 410 gear. So I had this 12 bolt. This is in a 64 Chevrolet truck. Now the width of these are the same, so that's not an issue. Uh, the only issue is, is the uh, purchase. And, uh, you know, it had the uh, pan hard bar and where, you know, the 55 just got leaf springs. But So we'll have to weld new purchase on it where they need to be, which we've done that a bunch. Now, you joint size are the same, so I think I can get by with my drive shaft without having to change anything. Uh, 308 gear, that was the best part of it. I, I thought it was going to be lower than that because it was a six-hundred truck, but uh, luckily it turned out to be a 308. But we ran into an issue. Uh, this side, if you can see, I don't think it's got any bearings left. And the chances of that axle being any good is going to be slim to none. So I'm going to have to come up with an axle for it. Uh, now you can buy these axles on eBay, but I've got a buddy that's got one that hopefully is going to be the right line and the, the right length. But anyway, but that's our rear end we're planning on putting in the, uh, the 55. And that should, uh, that should help us out with the turbo, the little diesel. 
and hopefully we can get on it soon and we'll get it knocked out. And we've still got the transmission transfer case to put in the uh, the uh, four-wheel drive Chevrolet. We'll get on it pretty soon. And uh, we're collecting wood and parts up and uh, I'm getting some woodworking stuff together for the whip it so we can do some more video on it. I'm going to be working on the L car pretty soon. Uh, we're going to knock the wood out on it so we can go ahead and get some paint on that car. And uh, I'm going to try to make it a, you know, a decent driver. So anyway, all right. I appreciate everybody watching and uh, look forward to showing more projects. There are uh, plenty coming up. All right. Bye.